What's up everybody? Today we're going to look at three super cool text animations that will just make your designs pop. Let's jump in. The first one we're going to look at is a ripple animation. I've got this text box here that says ripple and the first thing I want to do is I want to put this inside of a frame. So I'm just going to right click on it and say frame selection. So in order to get this ripple animation we're going to need to break it down letter by letter. You've got two ways of doing this. First way is creating text boxes for every single letter. Second way, which is what we're going to do, is going to be changing the letters into vectors. So I'm going to select my text box and then command E to make it into a vector. Now I need to separate them. So this is a bit of grunt work, but it's super quick with my little trick. That rhymed. So if you double click on it, you'll get all of these points. I'm just going to drag and select the points of one single letter and then command X, double click out and command V that has created a new vector of just that. And we keep going and doing that for all of my letters. Perfect. So I've got all of my letters now and they are individual vectors. So this is gonna be the full state where it's kind of either coming from or going to get to, depending what way you wanna do this animation. What we need to do now is duplicate this. So I'm just gonna duplicate it and duplicate it above or to the side, not below. I want to make sure that clip content isn't ticked, so it's kind of empty. And now I'm going to move all of these out. Now I'm going to move them outside of the frame in kind of a ripply way. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to select all of them and then using my keyboard, don't use the mouse because we're going to drag them outside of the frame, but we want them to stay inside of the frame and it's just easier to do this with the mouse. I'm going to nudge them up, holding down shift as well because that gives us a big nudge. I'm going to move them till they are outside of the frame. So the frame is here. They are in here. Make sure in the layers panel that they are still underneath this frame. Now, if I kept them like this in a straight line, what would happen when I create the animation is the whole word would just go, whoop, it'll just go up, which is cool, not what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of the letters apart from the first one, holding down shift, just go up once, then select all of the letters apart from that I, shift and up once, and again, shift and up once, again, shift and up once, Again, shift it up once. Just because the P is kind of a lowercase one, I'm gonna take all of these and do one more so there's more of an impact between them and that I. Great, so I've got these here, I've got these here. Now I'm gonna select this frame and say clip content. I'm gonna give it a stroke just so we can still see that it's there. But basically we have one frame that has the text inside of it, just as it is, it looks like a perfect piece of text. And then the one above, all of it is kind of hidden because it's way above. I'm gonna select both of these and put them into a component set. Now I'm gonna create the interaction between these two components. So I'm gonna go into prototype, select the full one, so the one that says the word ripple on it. And then with my noodle, drag it to the other one. Now it depends, do you want this to happen on its own or do you want this to happen when you tap on it? I want it to happen when you tap on it. So I'm gonna say on click, change to and change it to the other one. For now, I'm gonna use the ease in Smart Animate because it's the most simple one. And I'm gonna create kind of the opposite as well. So I'm gonna drag this down and say on click, change to that, ease in, great. I'm gonna remove the border from this one because we don't need it anymore. I'm gonna tap on F and just drag to create a frame. Now I'm gonna go into my assets panel. Now it's likely that you won't be able to see it because the top one is the default one and the default one looks empty, but that's fine. I'm just gonna drag that in and just change it to be frame number one. Now I'm gonna go into prototype and just add a flow starting point on this frame and we're gonna play it and see how it looks. When I tap on this, look what happened. Tap again. So you see we get the zoo. Let's make it a bit more substantial. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change the animation. So I'm gonna drag and select both of these noodles and I'm gonna change it instead of ease in and out, maybe we use quick. Now let's play that again and see what happens. Click on R to restart. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, if you wanna get a lot more ripple in there, you just need to make these much further away. So I'm gonna unclip the content and then just unclip the content of this as well so I can see them. And then I can just get these further away. So if I select these and say one, two up, holding down shift, one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two, and then clip the content. If I replay this now, I'm clicking on R and just click on it. You see, it gives it a bit more of that. And you can play around with the timings of it. You can decide exactly how you wanna do it. If I change the color of the ones on top, it will also change color as it's going away, but we've got a ripple effect. Second animation we wanna do is a typewriter. So for this one, let's create our little kind of 
blinking cursor to start off with. So I'm gonna click on F and then create a little frame, just drag something, want the width to be probably like five, and then the height, let's say 25. It really doesn't matter that much right now because we can change it later. I wanna give it some sort of color. So I'm gonna go with that little purple that we made before. And then I wanna make this into a component. So I'm just gonna component it. Now I wanna add a variation. Because it's a blinking cursor, one variation is gonna have color to it and one isn't. I'm gonna select the other one and then just remove the fill. I'm gonna put some interaction between them. I'm gonna say prototype and then just prototype them in between and say after delay, I'm gonna say about 200 milliseconds. Don't make it too quick. Um, and instead of Smart Animate, I'm just gonna use Instant. Smart Animate tends to muddle this a little bit. Uh, so we could just use Instant, do the same thing backwards, on click, change to Instant. Fabulous. Now let's create the full amount of text that we want it to type. So I'm gonna click on T, tap in and say typewriter. Now I'm gonna drag that little cursor that we made next to it. So I'm gonna change the name of this to blinking and then go into the assets panel and just grab that in. Now you see it's a bit too small. So I'm just gonna drag it down a tiny bit. Great. I wanna put both of these into a frame. So I'm gonna select both of them and say frame selection. I wanna make sure that my blinking cursor is all the way to the right and that it's also constrained to the right. This will just help us when we're creating the different variations. Wonderful. So this is our full state, right? This is how we want it to end up. Now we start going backwards in our animation. We're gonna hide one letter at a time. So I'm gonna hold down Option and Shift and just drag to duplicate this. And now I'm gonna make this smaller so the R is hidden. If I clip my content, I won't see the R. Now you see there's that little gap here. That's why I wanted this one all the way to the right. So I'm gonna just align that again. Perfect. And because we constrain this to the right as well, it's gonna move with me and I don't need to move it on my own. So that's great. So now we're gonna duplicate this and hide one letter at a time. So I've created all of my different states. You can notice here that the P isn't really hidden by the cursor. So I could just add a space in there just to get that kind of hidden away. Now what I wanna do is I wanna put them into a component. So I'm gonna select all of these and I'm gonna say create component set. Once I do that, I now need to make the animation between each of these sections. So I'm gonna start with the first one. I'm gonna say prototype and I'll say after delay, I'm gonna give it about 300 milliseconds, just change to this one. Now, you might be tempted to use Smart Animate with this one, I know I was, but when you use Smart Animate, it really messes with the blinker and then you like miss the blinker out sometimes and it just becomes really weird. So I would suggest just using Instant because that gives it that whoosh, whoosh, whoosh typewriter. We're gonna have to do that for each one. But what I suggest that you do, you just select this noodle and then hold it down here so it's kind of blue around it and then Command C. Then we're gonna select all of the variations apart from the last one. So I'm gonna select from here till here and just say Command, Shift and V. And that's gonna copy those animations onto there. Don't get too excited. We still need to do one more thing. It's gonna connect all of them to the same one. So we just need to go back and change that. So I'm gonna say this one is number 10. So instead of going to 11, that needs to go to nine. This one, instead of going to 11, it's number nine. So this one goes to eight. Great, so now they're all going to the one that's beneath them and that's exactly the animation that we want. Now let's see this in action. I'm gonna click on F, drag in a frame, and then I'm gonna change this to typed. Go into my assets panel, drag in typed over here. Make sure that it has space to kind of grow to the left. Um, and then I'm just gonna click here, say start a new flow. So one tiny change, we had a bit of a discrepancy. The animations have to match the blinking. So if this is 300, that has to be 300. So I'm gonna just change, these ones are all 300. I'm gonna change the blinking ones as well. I'm gonna make sure that they're both after delay and 300. If I go into my prototype now and I click on R to have it started, boom, 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 we have a typewriter. Now this might look a bit slow to you. This is how it's gonna look if we have 100 set on it instead. Just remember it needs to be on the blinker and on the letters at the same time. Let's go to animation number three. So animation number three is one of my favorites. I really like doing this one and I'm using lyrics from Shrek the Musical because I'm a big musical theater nerd. So we have this bit of text here. It says it's a big, bright, beautiful world. And we want that big, bright and beautiful to kind of change in its place. You'll probably 
be familiar with this animation and it's actually one of the easiest ones we've done yet. Let's see how it works. So I've created two separate text boxes. I've got this one that says big, bright, beautiful and this one that says the rest of the lyrics and I've got space in here for this one. It's great to have it at the end so you're not kind of accommodating for three different sizes of words in the middle of a sentence. What I'm gonna do now is go into design and I'm just gonna place this inside of a frame. So I'm gonna right click and say frame selection. I'm just gonna move it out here for a second. Then I'm gonna change it so each time I can only see one word. I'm gonna make sure that the frame is clipped. I'm gonna say this one is showing just the word big. And then I'm gonna duplicate it. And then instead of moving the frame, I'm gonna move the text box. So I'm going to select the text box inside and then with my arrows and holding down shift, I'm just gonna move that until bright is in the frame. I'm gonna duplicate that again, select the text box, shift and up until beautiful is in it. And I can hold down the frame just to make sure that it's kind of centered-ish probably want to nudge it one up. I'm going to select the three of these and then say create component set. Very similar to how we've done it before. Now I'm going to create a kind of rotation between the three. So I'm going to create a prototype between these two. I'm going to drag my noodle to this one and it's going to say change to property four. I'm going to leave it on instant for now just so we can see it working. Great. I'm going to call this pink text and then let's create a frame. Click on F, drag, bring this into here and then go into our assets panel, bring over our new bit of text, drop it into here. And I just wanna change that. So I wanna make sure this doesn't happen on a click, but it happens after a delay. I'm gonna say 300 and then this one at on after delay, 300 as well. Good. So let's play this. I'm gonna click here and say float starting point and play. Okay, so I'm clicking on R to restart it. It's working, but it's not the best. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this animation. So I'm gonna say after delay, and I'm gonna say smart animate. And that smart animate, I'm gonna leave it on quick. That's fine for me. This one, I'm gonna say smart animate and quick as well. Now let's have a look at it again. I'm gonna click on play, click on R. Look at that, it's so cool, right? It's kind of like shoosh, shoosh, it's coming in. Now, now it's coming in from the bottom. If we wanted to come in from the top, we just need to swap the text around. So instead of big, bright, beautiful, it needs to say beautiful, bright, big, and then it will come from the top. One last thing I want us to do, I want us to create this in a loop. So what I'm gonna do is click on beautiful and then just make beautiful go back to big. I'm gonna say after delay, maybe give it 400 just so it's a second more and I want to use bouncy because it's my favorite so if I play this click on R let's see that big bright beautiful whoop big bright beautiful and that was our third animation so just like that in a really 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 short amount of time we've created three amazing animations for text that will really boost up your designs hope you enjoyed leave a comment below let me know what you want to see next watch the rest of my videos to get inspired and make amazing figma designs see you at the next one